One year ago today, James Galgley was named the 14th president of the University of Oklahoma. He officially took the job several months later, and in his first year has led the state's flagship university through a financial restructuring that has put him at odds with his predecessor. But what exactly has the process been like for Galgley as he transitions from a professional life of running huge corporations to managing more than 24,000 students? Adam Kemp covers higher education for the Oklahoman and recently sat down with Galgley to discuss his first several months in office. And Adam, this has been quite an eventful year for Galgley. Uh, definitely. Uh, just the things he's been through uh, in the course of, you know, it, he, he took office uh, mm-hmm. July 1st of 2018. But yeah, this today itself is, is the one year anniversary of him being named. He had a big ticker tape parade his first day, surrounded by cheerleaders. He gets greeted by OU football coach Lincoln Riley and uh, kind of all kicked off from this point, including um, his very quick discovery of OU's financial situation, yeah. which uh, was, <laughs> uh, he discovered pretty quickly, was not in great shape. I've run really large businesses, some of the largest businesses in our country, and I understand financials, and I couldn't make the math work. And so I went back to our previous CFO and said, you have to be losing money because I'm seeing cash drop. I said, no, 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 it's, it's break-even, slightly positive. 30 days later, he was agreeing with me that we had financial losses. Okay. And the losses were in the neighborhood of 25 to $30 million of cash a year. Uh, this is all more of an issue that kind of started five years ago. I think before that, we were in better shape. Mm-hmm. And then for a variety of reasons, partly our construction projects and some of the things we're doing, Uh, we started to run into negative cash. And we also took on a lot of special new projects. And doing all of that put a cash strain on the university. And I don't think it was fully understood by the prior administration or the regents that we were losing cash at the rate that we were. I'll say that the previous CFO, I don't think really understood that. So if you're a Galgley fan or supporter, you see him as kind of a financial savior for the university. If you're a critic, you see him as someone who's coming in and trying to undermine the work of former President David Bourne. And we'll get into that in just a moment. But what was interesting in the story that you wrote for today's paper was that Galgley was pretty candid about how tough the job has been in the initial months. You know, I'm here because I love the university. Uh, And that love hasn't changed. No. When I took the job, it wasn't about did this pay more or that pay more. In fact, the other job paid a whole lot more. You know, I, I was in the private sector, and that was a very different world. So coming to this, it, it, it's never been about the work. It's more about service. Uh, and the service opportunity I found is actually greater than I thought would be here. Uh, I thought it would be a fairly easy job, and I wouldn't be working long hours. Boy, was I wrong. Um, But, you know, I'm I'm not here for any other reason than to simply serve the state, the institution, the students, the faculty, the rest of the staff. That's my job. And so there's great opportunities for service. Uh, Not not all of it is rewarding. uh, But on the other hand, you know, that's when you're serving, that's not expected. Yeah, he pretty much um, just you know said it as plainly as can be that this job's way harder than he thought it was going to be. And, and when you take into consideration everything he's faced in his first you know year, it's it's easy to see why a uh, financial situation that was unexpected. No one really knew what OU's situation was. He's dealt with several racist incidents on campus that you know cast the university in a really awful looking light. And uh, he also uh, just has this back and forth with Boren in the media, um, though he kind of illustrates in, in the story that you know he's never said anything specifically against his predecessor, David Boren. Um, a lot of people have taken his words about OU's financial situation and just um, his job, his first year as a whole, kind of as a rebuke of Boren's entire tenure. Well, and it's hard not to take it that way when you come in and say, listen, this 
university has been mismanaged from a financial position for years and we're going to have to take some drastic steps. That's not a ringing endorsement of your predecessor, but uh, Galgli and Bourne were were close before that, right? Yeah, he talked about um, kind of their relationship. Uh, he used to attend you know different sporting events with him, football, basketball. Um, he made several million dollar donations mm -hmm. to under, you know, when Bourne was president. So um, the relationship goes back quite a few years. And, um, y you know, coming through the archives, actually, while working on the story, it was kind of a, an interesting mind reminder that one year ago today, David Bourne was wearing a pin on his lapel that had James Gallagher's face mm -hmm. on it, um, supporting his predecessor and, you know, really welcoming him as the new president. You know, there's this dialogue that that, um, you know, we're not friends today. Uh, I think some of that is third parties saying all sorts of different things. But, but I'll also tell you, uh, I'm a very candid person. And all of this primarily came up when I was critical of the financial situation. There, there were some statements that were made that I said this or that, and, and I was very clear on that. I never said that and wouldn't say that. There's no point in that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, tearing down something, somebody, doesn't help the cause. We're all about this wonderful institution, the University of Oklahoma, not about this person or that person. How much does it hurt to kind of be cast that way? I, I didn't like that at all. And I especially don't like, you know, the misquoting. Don't know where that came from. I thought that was very, very inappropriate. Uh, and I also think it's damaging to our institution. Uh, people who know me would right away say, no, he would never say that. Mm -hmm. uh, people who don't, who might read that, say, gee, I wonder what that's all about. Uh, have I said negative things about some of the past? Yes. But then the question is, was it truthful or not? You said something about you're by the book. You know, I call it like I see it. And I'm truthful about what I see. And then we go and address it. Well, I imagine that Gogli feels like he's in his element when it comes to dealing with budgets and finances. And there's a lot of people, especially in, I mean, the regents made the hire, but I, I, there's been reports about, you know, the conservative state legislature here, um, you know, has been supportive of seeing kind of a conservative financial guru go in and, and kind of go through higher education budget with a, with a fine tooth comb. Um, you, re you referenced, though, some of those incidents, the, the most uh, public of which were, were students that were seen in, in blackface um, and kind of a reminder of what we saw with the fraternity a few years ago. Any sense from Galgley that he um, regretted how he handled it or felt like he could have done some things differently? Yeah, he said it um, just pretty plainly. Um, he's still learning how to deal with those kind of situations. He, you know, he talked very candidly about how he is a numbers guy. He really understands budgets and he understands how a business side of things work. It's kind of the dealing with students and it's the education part of things that he still admits that he's trying to learn and figure out and he relies on, you know, a bunch of different people, the provost of OU and, you know, experienced tenured professors to kind of, you know, help guide him along the way. Um, he, 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 he did, he admitted, um, just how much he still has to grow and learn in that area. Uh, he, he also talked about the steps they're taking. They are, you know, really boosting up their hiring process on campus to really make sure they, you know, have a diverse staff on campus. He said for the wa longest time they've had these policies in place um, where they're supposed to go through a very robust committee search mm -hmm. for each hire on campus. He said that wasn't happening at OU, and now they, for each hire since he's been there, have really gone through that process. He's emailed out to every department to figure out, okay, what are you doing to enhance diversity on campus, and um, tell me, you know, any programs, steps, uh, activities that you're doing that are, uh, that, you know, highlight that, and he got very few responses back when he first sent that email, and so he's uh, really you know, kind of buckling down on that and telling people like, hey, it's time to get on it. We got to get on it as a, as a, as a team and really kind of improve the culture of this university. Yeah. Another interesting moment in your story is you talked about how he got acclimated with the university when he was first announced as president. He and his wife actually lived in the dorms for a bit. Yeah, some pretty hilarious moments. Uh, you can imagine Galgley and his wife. Yeah, Galgley is 65 years old. Um, being uh, in the dorms with all kinds of, you know, 18 through 20-year-olds, I imagine, was a, a bit of a shock to him. 
um, including one night when he and his wife Janet were um, walking out of their dorm and uh, they ran into an OU offensive lineman who just happened to be carrying a two-foot-long iguana in his arms. And Gallagher said he uh, learned that night uh, how quickly his wife can run a 40-yard <laughs> dash the other way. So. Yeah. Well, an eventful first several months for Galgley, who's now the president, has been the president of the University of Oklahoma for the last several months, announced one year ago. And uh, this is the state's flagship university. So for even those who are not students or alumni, um, still an important institution here in the state and will be interesting to watch going forward. Adam, thanks. No problem. 